Alrighty, welcome back. It's Sunday fun day, and Jolene looks amazing. I'm going to start off with that. Jolene looks amazing, uh, and that's basically how I feel. But we're in the shop. It's Sunday fun day. I ran out of I ran out of Blue Shield for the for the MIG welder yesterday. I was trying to get that one shock put in, one the one air ride shock put in. And I'm just looking at the hat right at the present moment. If we want to take, I'll just take a second. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing, and that's all I can do is show you what I'm doing, and uh, let's do it. So right now, what what has happened? This is where I'm at. the The lower control arm has been dropped. The spindle has been let go from the top ball joint. I have this is what I have right here. So we'll go over this slowly so everybody knows what's going on. Anybody has a 55 or 56 Mercury or that close that wants to buy an air ride system like that, they can do exactly what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is I'm modifying and cutting uh, to make this system work. Uh, the system is a beautiful system. Thank you, Henry, very much. Thank you very much, Henry. It's a beautiful system, but I'm, I really want to put it on Elvis and make it work. But what this is what's going on. I'll put this back. This goes in here like this, if Jolene wants to come up close. This was where the shock bolted on, there and there. It might have been turned the other way, I'm not sure, but that's the way it went on, right there like that. I've cut it out. You can see the pigtail of, of the coil spring where it sat. There's the end of the pigtail and come around there like that, sat there like that. It run up inside this part here, and the coil was running up inside the chassis right here. And this little tiny hat up here was for the shock, and I've cut that hat off. Um, I have no fear of cutting that hat off because we have one, two layers of metal that are riveted to the chassis, which holds this top control arm. And like I always say, when I think of gussets, and what I mean by gusset is that I mean help, um, this flat piece here, um, that's where the upper control arm is bolted on. It's shimmed on the other side for in and out for your wheel. Uh, Year, I guess years ago when they built cars, things were put together and shimmed. Uh, nowadays, I'm thinking, I don't work on many new cars, but nowadays all the cars are basically where the, where, the, where the bolts are is where the holes are, and that's where it goes on. There's no shimming, and I guess you can shim it if you want to, but they tried to take that out of the car building situation because, let's face it, it takes less time to put a car together if it's in precision. If I have a fender that I want to bolt on the car, you throw it on the car, you bolt it up, and that's how it fits. Not like when you get in cars like this. When you get in cars like this, it's shim. you can shim it in the back, you can shim it in the front, you can have shims in the control arms. Everything was shimmed. I guess they realized that everybody wasn't perfect back then, and they, they allowed that to be able to shim things. And that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm up in this hat right here. I've cut this off. And uh, what I've done is I cut that hat off where the shock went up in. This held the spring down to here. This is where, you know, where the spring was. It held up inside here. Uh, the hat, like I said, held the shock. And what's happened, when, when, once I cut that out, this only had one layer of metal there. You can see I welded a piece of metal in there before I ran out of gas. I, a piece of 1 8 plate. I put that in there because I'm, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to get the shock. I got the shot, the airbag right here. I really, I, these are quite something because this, this, this shield here out of aluminum uh, protects the bag. Perfect, perfect. Uh, on Jolene's car, there's no nothing protecting anything. It's the bag, and that's it. Uh, these here, I'm, I'm thinking that Henry never bought them for a 55 Mercury or 56 Mercury, so we have to modify to make it work. We got the back ones working really good. We're going to put, end up putting the hats on them, hopefully, if we can find out how it does it. Uh, Downtown John has dropped all the front suspension for me, and uh, he did the other side, and I'm going to show you how I cut the other side and how I did it, because I like you guys. <laughs> so anyways, here we go. This is what's going on. Um, this is the bottom. Like I said, I can read that because it's upright, and, the, sh and the, you know, the shield's here for the bag. This is a bracket. That, these are a couple little brackets that I had on, over on Jolene's car. I'm taking things from other things to make things, if you understand that. This is a, a bracket here. I've bolted it on to get a true read. I've cut myself a piece of 3 16th plate here to try to make the bracket look right. That's where I ran out. That's the end of it. I couldn't weld it up because I ran out of welder. 
But what's going on here is I'm taking this part, shoving it. We're just going to shove this up through here. Got to let this down some, I guess. Let that down. I'm shoving this up through here. This is where the coil used to be, and it's, and it's where it's going to be. Now you can see when I, when I have my airbag in here, you see on the top here, come take a look, sweetheart. This is where the, where the bracket is. I can weld this bracket to the top control arm bracket, weld that on there, and that contains the top bag. What has to happen on the bottom when I jack that up, this bottom control arm comes up. I've cut this out so we can let this go down through. It, it went down through, uh, basically it went down through, but it was kind of tight. So I just cut that out because we don't want any interference in anything. So that's going to weld, this is going to weld the bracket on here. We're going to weld that on there. I'm going to jack this up and then we'll weld a, a bracket on the bottom. Not sure how I'm going to make that bracket yet, but this, that's what's got to be done. And then the airbag will be exactly where I need it to go up and down. So, and what I'm going to do, this is what's, what's going to happen. Just trying to, trying to keep it basic and easy. I'll put that up in there and we'll, we'll jack the lower control arm. Actually, I'll just put the, I'll put the bag in there to show. I'll put the bag in there to show. We're seeing where it's Sunday fun day. And I'm going to show you how I got it cut out and stuff. I'll put that back in there. That, uh, that aluminum shield is very nice. You can see me jacking this back up. Hooking my ball joint back in. Okay, see what's going on there. I jacked that fell there, obviously. So my shock's going to be in place up here. And then my shock's going to go under in that hole. And I'm going to have to build a bracket that holds that down here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack this, the lower control arm, up as far as I can get it. So that means it would be on the ground. And then I will make the mount for the bottom. So I'm going to take this up as high as I can on the top. Jack that up far as I can to get the car like as if it was sitting on the ground. Make the bracket for the bottom, and then I will know. I wonder if that get that up further. And then I will know when when we come up, we'll have our our air our ride, and I will know that this will come all the way down on the back when we put it on, when we first did it. It sat like a full drive and it would not come down far enough. If I put these, we couldn't do the, the ones in the back backwards because we were trying to keep the rear end in place. But as I'm doing this one, I can jack the, front, the lower control arm up and make it as if the car is sitting on the ground and then make the bracket. That way there, when I put the air to it, we're gonna, be, we're gonna have ride. Um, and we're also gonna know that it'll go to the ground basically. So if we, if we mount these airbags and all that system, um, knowing that it will go to the ground, then we know when we put air to it, it's going to come up. And that's how I'm going to do the front ride on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the other side. I'm going to go on the other side. And I'm going to show you how I cut it out and got it ready, what I exactly did. Um, you know how it fits and what's going on there. Just making a little bracket. We're making about a nice good steel, 3 16 or a little better. And I stole that from Jolene. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to turn the air compressor on, sorry. It's Sunday fun day, and Jolene looks amazing. Let me swear. Uh, we're going to go to the other side here. I'm going to plug some air down here in the back of the, of the plasma cutter. And we'll show how we get it done. Right on. Coming into money. 
Coming into money. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Henry, for the air system. I can't say it enough. Every time I, I drive the car, not let her down, I'll think, Henry, Henry. So what I have, you come over and look at this side. So there's, there's the bottom. Could not. I'm going to go get the shock again. I'm going to get the shock again. This is a real good system because the shock is in the airbag. And if I did not have this system, I, I would have to put I could I would have to put the bag on this part here, put the bag up in there, and then I would still have to have a shock. So yeah, I'd have to make something, obviously. But you can see how that that can fit in there a little ways, but does not fit right down through where we want it. Does not fit down through there where we want it. So what I'm what I've done, I've cut that out. And I'm going to do that right now. And on the top, it has this hat. This is where the shock bolts on. The, the coil is in this part. The coil does not come up in that. That's this, this is the hat for the shock. The coil is inside here, and that's fine because we're not taking any strength from it. We're just cutting this hat off where the shock went. I'll put this back. I'm doing some two-stepping around here. I got a mess, sort of, but I don't want to clean it up until I get uh, the air or my air, for my oxygen, my Aragon for my MIG water. I do not want to clean it up because I've got things I want to do. Now, let's check this out. So, so. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the bottom out. You can see where the coil went. That's the bottom control arm. It's nice to leave a little bit of meat left for the die grinder so I can die grind it off so it looks really nice. Probably didn't leave much meat there, I didn't, but it's okay. I'm going to go the other way, sweetheart. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. There you go. So, that's the first step I did. And all I did is cut the, the two bolts out for the, for the shock. Um, this still got all kinds of strength there. Uh, it's plated on the bottom control arm. It's not hurting a damn thing. So, this is what I'm going to do on the top. Every time I, when I'm doing something like this, you really have to think, you really have to take your brain one step further. Is it going to be safe? You're, like, you know, and if you build something, um, you have to take that jump and go for it, really. You really do. I mean, when I weld something up, I have to um, think that it's okay before I go on the road. I would never want to hurt anybody or hurt my, hurt Jolene. Can you imagine? Can't imagine it. But what I'm going to do now is cut this bag off, or this, top control arm here, or this top mount or hat for the shock, and uh, this is what I do. And I use many different tools to get this job done. There's lots of different tools to get this job done. Peekaboo! Little peekaboo hole. Make your race car lighter, baby, just like that. So we're gonna cut this off. And the reason I th think this is fine, because we have, like I said, this gusset here would hold this plate, this gusset here would hold this plate. We're leaving this all connected. We're just getting rid of this.
Had my first on camera boo-boo. Just a boo-boo. I whacked it good and hard. That's all I had to do was kiss it. It happens when you're working on stuff like this. That's the one thing on why I, I guess I, I didn't like mechanics much. Every time I went to do something, I barked a knuckle or tore the, knuckle, the skin off my knuckles, and it was very aggravating. <laughs> didn't like that. knock the top of these rivets off. Don't want them. I'm going to cut that metal out of there. We're going back further than that. Just look. Don't want to blow a fuse. Just going to hold up for a second. Maybe what I'll do is I'll jump inside and cut the top of the hat off. So what I'll do is I'll jump inside and cut the top of the hat off. That part up there. And you know what? I don't know. There's, I guess there's more than one way to skin a cat. Yes, there is. There's more than one way to do this. But I don't feel like there's a whole bunch of ways to put that air ride system on this car other than what I'm doing, basically. So if you have a 55 or a 56 Mercury, you think that you would like to throw on the ground. I'm in the vicinity of what you have to do. I'm not saying I'm exactly what you have to do, but I'm in the vicinity. And the vicinity means close. Not that you don't know that. Now you can see, um, you can see on this part, you, want, you can come up in, on the thing now, baby. I'll go ahead on the other side. Come up on the ladder. Come up on this side if you like. Alrighty. You can see Right, right where, I've got, where I got my finger, I got my finger. That little edge all the way around there, that's what's, what, what contained the coil spring. So the coil spring could not get out of place. All that has to be cut off, this, this ring around here that contained that coil spring has to be cut off to allow that, that uh, air ride shock come up through and the protection bag or the protection cone so that has to be cut off. So what has to happen, I cut more of this off, I cut more of this off, bring it over here, get this off, and then I'll cut that inside ring off, and then we can get that airbag up through. I don't want to get my head in there right now. I think there's too much stuff to... Just trying to get out that... Rivet. Jim is close to firing up his Oldsmobile. Or, yeah, getting close to firing up his Oldsmobile. He's got the motor in. He's got it painted. Uh, he's rebuilt the carburetor. He's done a little bit of. I don't know what he's done to the transmission. Story. I don't think he's done much to the transmission, but he's getting really close. He's painted it and, and got it in there. You gotta, you gotta give him a pat on the back. He's doing it all by himself, you know, out in the gray edge working. And we're on air. Thank you very much. We're on air. That's a cool little unit, that is. That's a very cool little unit. We're on air. I also had had a we had a little message of some guy, I think, working on skidoos or motorbike modifying, stuff like that. Man, this show is for anybody that wants to build something and, and uh, take their brain somewhere else and other than poopy stuff. This is all good stuff. All good stuff. 
I don't care if it's a motorbike, a ski do, a go kart, a lawnmower. Um, this is all stuff that takes your brain and uh, keeps us busy. I want to see what I got cut. I want to see exactly how we got it cut on the other side so I don't do anything different. That one cut. Okay. I don't want to do anything different on one side than the other. Basically, that's how I do everything. One side I, I do, I do the exact same on the other side. That's about the end of it. I do the exact same on the other side. Da, 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 da. All right, let's get a hammer and a chisel. Yesterday I hit my finger very hard. I showed you on the camera there, I hit my finger quite hard. And basically that's what happens when you're doing stuff. But what I, sh what I should have done, what, is what I'm gonna do right now, if you're chiseling something with a hammer or something like that, grab a pair of vice grips and throw it on your chisel so you don't hurt yourself. What I should have done, I should have threw a hammer on a chisel. That way there, I'm not holding the chisel in, in the way of my hand. So, just help fuller out a little bit, you know. Help fuller out a little bit. All right, wow, that came off a lot nicer than the other side, didn't it, baby? A lot nicer. All righty. Now, you can still see that it's... It's still riveted there, still riveted there, still riveted up in there, still riveted there. I have not really taken any structure away from what's going on here, the top control arm. I still have help here. I still have help here. Now I'm going inside to cut that lip off on to hold the coal spring in. Sometimes it's hard to get what you need, but keep working at it. Ah, I'm just wondering how far back I'm going. Take a look up inside. I gotta come back quite a ways, I think. Just gonna get in this side and take a look. Yep, the two rivets are gone, so I'm gonna have to come back in there a little further. And it's hard to, yeah. And we're, we're finding it difficult, or Jolene's been finding it difficult to show um, what the video is about because it's so hard to put that air ride on the back in an hour. Like, it's so hard. We can, we can do it once and uh, not complete it and show you. <laughs> yes, we can. But uh, it's so hard to show what, what I'm doing in it within the hour. But this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. All right, my baby. This is what we do. Cut this off and then cut some more meat out of her.
It's a hard spot to get at. Just take your time. Keep plugging away and taking stuff out of it. I can do it. You can do it. Simple as that. these rivets off. Just trying to burn them out. Because we do not need them. Knocking her out. Basically what we're trying for is get that airbag up in there. We're going for. I'll take a look up inside, see where I'm at. Getting close, that's for sure. Bend it down, see what happens. We're getting close, I just gotta keep at it. We're getting close, you gotta keep at it. This is where the old torches would come in good. Oh, have we lost our ground? Come on, baby, drop it for me. Let's go around here a little bit. Ouch. She's hot down here. She's hot. Here we go. Here we go. That's the piece I want right there. Now, I've got a hole there and I just got to cheat chiseling it back a little bit.
There you go. We're getting close. So what, ha what happens from here? I'm not going to put that die grinder on and knock a bunch of noise. No, I'm not. But basically what goes on, that shock goes up through there and up through that hole. I've got this plate right here. You come and take a look through here. Now I've cut that hat off. Now I've only got one layer of metal there. And what happens is when I made that bracket, I just cut this back a little bit. I shaved this back a little bit. And then I took in a piece of metal and I welded it in on that plate right here to make this all flush because there's two pieces there. I welded a piece on there. We can go to the other side and I'll show you. We'll go to the other side. We're basically at the same spot we are on the other side, on this side. But I'm going to take this and go and make a bunch of noise. This piece here, you can see now, as I have, see I've got a piece welded in there. I'm going to actually put another piece on all the way across, but I put that piece in there to take up for that, make, to make that flat, to make this bracket hold flat. Oh, that's all the way down. So what happened was when I had this bracket on there, it only hit, it only hit at the top, just a little tiny bit. I don't want that to have the bracket or the, the mount crooked or anything like that. I want the bracket to lay on there nice. So what I did is I made it so the bracket lays on there flush and I can weld it all the way down the side, all the way along the top and all the way down the other side and have it fit right. Uh, if I did not do that, that bracket would sit in there on that one piece of metal and I didn't want that. I ran out of gas, I already told you, or I would have welded that all the way across there. I will clean this up a little bit more and then basically I'll put that up in there with this all the way up so I know that we're on the ground and then we, when we air it up then we're going to come off the ground uh, and then we'll be on to the bottom bracket. So I get to go over the other side, clean it up with the die grinder, take a piece of metal, cut it. I don't know if I had a piece of metal cut or not, but I take a piece of I have a piece of plate there. I didn't use that one though. I had another plate there, I thought. <laughs> Actually, I had a piece of 3 16 It's not here, but anyways, we'll come over this side. Then I take a piece of 3 16 metal. There it is. Oh, there it is. Look, it's three sixteenths. And I take that and then I lay it in there and I weld it in there. So when I put my bracket on, it goes on flush. You know, I have not weld on the top and then it angles off. I want it flush. So I laid that in there, weld it in there, clean this all up, and then I'll do the exact same thing. Then when the shock goes through here, there's a there's a hole at the bottom where it mounts on, just like the original shock did. And I'm going to have to make a bracket down on, on the bottom of the control arm to contain the air ride shock. And that's basically where I'm at. I would have had one side on, but as, we, as the gas ran out, as the gas runs out, um, I come over to the other side and get this side prepared. Not going to make the bunch of noise to make it look the way it should look, but that's what I've done uh, and that's what I will do. And if anything, if I'm, if I'm building this and I feel like anything is not strong enough or capable of doing what I think it should do. Um, I go, my brain goes to triangles, goes to gussets. Basically it goes to gussets and that's help. And uh, we all know everybody needs a little help sometimes and that includes your old car. But that's basically what I'm doing for the front air ride system. That's what I'm doing for the front to make it go up and down. We'll put it all the way so it's with the control arms, the car's down and we'll, we'll put the mounts on then and then when we air it up, we know we're off the ground. But, on the other hand, we'll know that we can go all the way to the ground if we want to. Also, when you look inside this car, uh, you see I got some square tubing up here on the top. I was, when I was building this car, I, I wanted to do something different underneath the hood. I really, you know, I really want to do a nice job and I want to paint on everything. I got paint underneath of it. Uh, I, I want paint underneath the hood. I want, I want to make it look I want to make a show car out of it, you know, but I want to drive it. So what I have done, I, I, this is, I've done this five years ago. Um, this is a pattern from the underneath the hood. This is the breather. Um, I was going to do, I was going to make it so you couldn't see the engine. Um, when you open the hood, all you see is 
bead rolled panels, and maybe the breather. Uh, you can see how the breather had the, on the 56 Ford, it has a little notch out there where the breather has a little hole. I was going to do two of them, have one run this way and run, one run this way. You can see how I was planning on bead rolling it to make it work. And the reason um, I was doing this is because Jolene had a Volkswagen that I worked on one time. And uh, when you opened the hood, you, you couldn't see the engine really. You just seen plastic and and pieces and whatever and basically what I was going to do um, when I opened the hood of the old car I was going to have it the exact same way you could see the breather but you could not see the engine and all you could see was uh, beaded bead rolled panels and you would wonder how well how do you get at the end do you mind when you when you when you look at the underneath the hood you would say well how do you get at it well I was just going to make quick connects through the square tubing that we make that you could just unscrew it and take it off and then you get at your engine but I did not want to see any of the mess in there. Um, I was taking from a new car and I was going to apply it to the old car and I think I might stick on that. There's many different ways to do the underneath the hood. I think Kindig shows it best how many different ways that you can do the underneath of the hood um, but back five years ago I wanted to make it so you could not see anything. <laughs> just kind of what I was going for and I might still go for that because I think it would be different and uh, if I've given you an idea go for it and if you can go off of anything that I'm doing to satisfy yourself go for it basically that's what about, what it's about we all feed off each other and uh, that's the way it should be but it's Sunday fun day and if I had gas for the old welder that airbag would be in there and the other airbag would be on its way um, but we're just going to hold back a little bit and uh, that's it that's it i want to thank everybody for you know all the comments and all the good stuff and all the pants i want to thank everybody at no means was i ugly when we did the the thing i just want to put it in perspective and you have to understand when you're passionate about something and you know and you know it, it comes off it comes off passionate and that's what I was. I'm very passionate about what I do. And um, other than that, it was not that I was mad. I just, some people need to know or some people need to click the brain, click the brain the next step and uh, to say, wow, you know, didn't know that. Did not know that. But we want to give away, how many, how many hats and t-shirts we giving away today? Three. three. Whoop, whoop. We're going to give away three, a hat or a t-shirt of your choice, just because we love you all. That's not true. We don't love you all. We, we, enjoy, we enjoy everybody's content and everybody's opinion. And uh, we're sort of a big family now, are we not? We're a car family. I must give, it, I must give a hands off to Bald and Dangerous and Benton. Um, they really keep a tight knit um, chat. And uh, hey, man, they're doing a great job. They're, they don't allow any negativity and all that sort of stuff. And we all sort of need that. We do not need certain things in our life to make us happy. Uh, we have to just kind of feed, feed off each other, work on our projects, keep our nose to the grindstone, and uh, basically, you'll be happy. Let's give away a hat, t shirt, or. A... We'll do the last three videos. Yeah. We're going to do the last three videos and give away a hat or a t shirt on each one. We'll the truth perspective. We're going to do the. We're going to give a hat or t-shirt away on this one I, I can't forget about the Facebookers I appreciate all your all your comments um, but if you know if you it's hard for us to go back and forth and give hats and t-shirts off each one if you really want to win a hat or a t-shirt come on the old YouTube and uh, You'll be much the welcomed. What? 1962. That was a great year. I wasn't born, but I heard it was. 1962. I think that's the biggest commented video that we've had yet. And I understand that because of my passion. Basically, that's about it. Just press. Go ahead. Press start. Baby, press start. There it is. Here we go. We got 1,962 comments. Bradley McKay. 
<laughs> I just want to give you a gigantic hug because you damn did someone piss you off. If I have ever said anything negative to you, I apologize over and over. I know I haven't, but if something did bother you, it, would, it was never meant to hurt you. Chad, I have learned so much from you, and I use that knowledge on my own vehicles. Well, thank you very much, Bradley McKay. If anybody's hugging me, it's going to be Jolene. <laughs> I'm not much of a hugger, and, and the, I'll tell you the reason why I'm not much of a hugger. Sometimes it's fake, <laughs> and I'm, 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 I'm UFC, man. I'm not WWE. Um, I apologize, I'm, but I would shake your hand and say thank you very much. Um, it was just kind of, I think maybe um, Jolene is into the comments, and I, like I, I read some of them if, I'm, if it's there. But Jolene said, we can't be known for not finishing anything. And I said, well, let's give them a little perspective. And that's how it that's how it happened. We wanted to give a little perspective. Uh, Jolene is, look, was looking out for me. She does not want anybody to think I don't finish anything because she knows how hard we work. And uh, basically that's it. And I want to thank you, Bradley. No hugs. Fist bump or a shake? Cool. You had her a shirt of your choice. Thank you very much for your kind words. I know you're a good man, Bradley, because you have... Um, what can I say? You, you give me an apology when... It's not necessary. I, I know how good a person you are. Here we go. We're going to do unboxing the, the, the gifts that people give us. And uh, it's another great thing that people do. And uh, what can I say is thank you. Two ninety nine. Sounds like a good price for an air ride, doesn't it? Two ninety nine. Wish. Jim McCulloch. If I say your name wrong, just because it, I don't read well. Lots of cool stuff we deserved. Well, I mean, well deserved. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Uh, I, yeah. If people are getting um, inspired and they want to thank us and throw the gift in the mail. We want to say thank you back because you have inspired us to get back at it and get on her. And uh, thank you very much. Jim, you get a hat or a shirt of your choice. Jim McCulloch. Look at all the color in that house. How could you not be happy with all the color? Love color. And this one's on the video of yesterday. yesterday, talking about Elvis and the air ride that, we're, that we put in the back. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I really, it was mostly talking, but I, I really wanted to let you know how long it took, how many times we did it, and what we did to get there. And uh, for Jolene to stand there six hours and watch us do it three times. Uh, was not the way. I have to thank John too for helping me and the good suggestions and how quickly we got it done. When I went in the house after we put the two airbags on the back and she went up and down, I was some happy. We had six hours in, I was some happy, you know, that we did that, we completed the back end. We did. When I say completed it, we mocked it up so it can be completed. We know where we're going, that's exactly what we did. But it goes up and down now, it's got suspension, I was very happy. Thanks, John. We'll start this one. Matt Davis, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. You know what? Um, I do not write on the computer a whole bunch. I do not. I just, I just, I just don't. I don't want to. I don't want to talk to anybody on the computer. I'm not that kind of guy because it'd be. Tick, tick, tick. I haven't got time for that. But when I answer, if someone says something nice, I'll give them a thumbs up because the thumbs up means everything's going good, everything's well, okay, excellent. It means all that stuff. When I take pictures, I even put my thumb up. I learned that from Gene Winfield because it's a good day. You know, you get your picture taken, someone's recognizing something, and uh, you have to thumbs up. That's what it means. It's all good. Thank you, Matt. You get a hat or t-shirt of your, of your choice. And uh, hope you come back tomorrow, and I will have gas.